itself basically did three things. Okay, it's important to understand. Number one, it appropriated $325,000 to Police Chief Dean to hire seven police officers, create a new special unit, okay, train them. Remember, year one cost was $2.4 million. Mm -hmm. The board only appropriated Chief Dean 2% of the money that he needs to implement this program. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one. Number two, the eight services that were denied to illegal immigrants mm -hmm. uh, are services that, quite frankly, I didn't even know existed in the county, let alone people who have been here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, it was a wash. I mean, these illegal immigrants are not going to use these services anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, you know, that's a joke. What okay? were those services? Oh, for example, drug rehabilitation in jail. If you get arrested mm -hmm. and you, you need drug rehabilitation and you're an illegal immigrant, you're gonna, it's going to be denied to you. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to expand your home, mm -hmm. uh, it's an older home in an older community, if you're going to expand it, you can get some sort of tax incentives on your property tax assessment. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you add up the total budget mm -hmm. for these eight services, it's mm -hmm. less than $2 million mm -hmm. out of a billion dollar, and some, depending on how you count it, at least a billion dollar budget. Right. But it did send a signal, and it sent a message, and 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 it's poisoned the environment. It's caused divisiveness in our community. It's divided the board of supervisors. Exactly. You know, I I know for a fact that one of the it made one of the supervisors who voted for it physically sick, physically sick, and what uh, that individual ended up doing is going immediately to their preacher and talking. You know, talking. I'm, I'm almost concerned, of, do we do we call it a board of supervisors or, or do we call it a board of followers? <laughs> I think that when we start infringing on the rights of anyone, mm -hmm. we really start infringing on our own rights because mm -hmm. if we take rights from them, then who's mm -hmm. to say that next year next? we need to have someone who's willing to, who's willing to really just look at the issue and just make a stand. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just being here with you tonight, obviously you're trying to make a stand and I, and I, and I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think that, you know, what Mr. Stewart has done is exactly, he's, he's, he's uh, stirred up a nest of bees. Yeah. And that's why it's so critical to get people to come out to vote on November 6th. It mm -hmm. is so critical. The future of Prince William County is in the hands of those people that come out to vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they get out to vote and they vote Corey out, mm -hmm. okay, vote Sharon Pandek in, mm -hmm. vote me in, things will change. Things will get better. We will have to go through an acknowledgement right. that there's been a problem, an issue, mm -hmm. there's poison. Mm -hmm. We need to have reconciliation. We need to have public dialogue. Right. And I think you're right. We need to revisit this resolution in its entirety. When I spoke, you know, at the October 16th meeting, I said that no one on the board represents me. When I say that, it's not the color of my skin. And the people say, oh, you know, it must have been the color of his skin. He's black. You know, no, that's not what I'm saying. I believe that someone can be of your kind, but not of your color. Here's the thing. How many people are willing to go into the communities with these people and actually sit down and talk to them? Fortunately, when you live in more affluent neighborhoods where people are more politically savvy, you know, uh, aware, conscious, mm -hmm. they have an opportunity to dialogue with the people who represent them. Mm -hmm. But the less affluent people who live in those communities have no idea mm -hmm. what their politicians, you know, believe, what their stances are, what they really are. Not the 30 second blurb in the car on a bullhorn stance, mm -hmm. but the real stance. Mm -hmm. I think it would be wonderful if somebody could go and actually sit in these people's homes and talk to them, let them know, hey, I'm here for you. What, what, what would you like of me? Because ultimately you're a public servant. So you're the voice of the voiceless. I've knocked on somewhere between 7,000 and 8,000 doors. I've done exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. People have invited me in. Exactly. I'm bilingual. I can speak to them in Spanish exactly. if we have some common understanding. Mm -hmm. my, my wife, I know what the family values and the work values are of the Hispanic mm -hmm. community firsthand. Incredible. I've been to South America I've, exactly. many times. Mm -hmm. I understand and appreciate it. Uh, and I've seen a, the Hispanic community rally around me. But we still have a lot more to go, a lot more work to go. So are you in favor of rescinding the resolution? Do you think that we should rescind it and revisit it? The, the word is revisit I would use, okay? Uh, and in fact, I think the way it was written, it's intended to be revisited after the election. The county staff, the people that we pay to manage the county operation, uh, they're not happy with it either. How difficult would it be to completely rescind it? have put together a community panel uh -huh. that actually has an opportunity to work with mm -hmm. the Board of Supervisors, mm -hmm. get a feel for how the community feels, mm -hmm. and then present a resolution that's mm -hmm. conducive Based to both that. sides. Right, right, right. Because yeah. all that we've done now is truly divide the community. Yeah, yeah, we've divided it first and foremost. We've digressed, mm -hmm. I would say, 70, 80 years. 
I mean, because basically what we're creating, it looks like another civil rights movement right, right here in the United States of America. Right here, right. Because now right. the legal immigrants mm -hmm. have to fight for their rights, right. just like the illegal immigrants. You can't walk up to someone and say, you're illegal. You're legal. Can't tell. You know, anytime you're fighting for your rights every day, you're not a citizen. Right. Because rights come along with citizenship. Right. Clearly, we need to revisit it. Clearly, there needs to be reconciliation. And clearly, we need some sort of a panel. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about it in the context of churches and schools and, and other centers of influence where we can bring people together. Uh, and clearly, that public dialogue has to go on before to. we can all move forward together. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because either we right. heal together. Right. Or we hurt. Right, right, exactly. Exactly, right. Right. exactly. We, we, we've got to heal this. Yeah. Because the kids, once again, I keep going back to the mm -hmm. children, right. they're here. Right. They're not going anywhere. These right. guys are citizens. Right. And they're going to remember this. That's right. You know, so I think that we have to be forward thinkers. We've got to be visionaries. Yes. Right. I don't think that Mr. Stewart was doing that at all. Right, I mean, I, I don't think we want to elect someone who's going to be cracking down on illegal immigration for the mm -hmm. next four years. Exactly. And uh, clearly we have much more difficult quality of life challenges in front of us like development, like traffic, like education. Exactly. That we need to, I mean, I think for the most part over the last 10 months we've mm -hmm. taken our eye off the ball. Exactly. Okay, and we need to turn the corner on November 6th mm -hmm. and focus on the real quality of life challenges that we exactly. have. Exactly. What would be the, your number one thing that you would like to see changed? other than the resolution? Oh, transportation. 